Hello everybody, it's your boy Bandit Banks here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you 10 minutes of useful information about Sea of Thieves. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know any useful information I may have missed in the comments below. But with that, let's roll the cringy intro and get straight into this video. As corrected in the comments of my 10 minutes of useless information about Sea of Thieves video plenty of times, these shop owners having names that coincide with the shop they reside in is actually useful for merchant cargo runs, allowing you to find someone at an outpost that you need to deliver cargo to based solely on the name. The storm in Sea of Thieves actually does not move randomly. It follows a set path. If you want to know the path of the storm, whether for fishing purposes or just to avoid it altogether, a useful tool is the weather forecast section at merfolkslullaby.com. This tracker shows the path of the storm and what time it will arrive at each specific island. If you are running low on supplies, especially food, the absolute best place to get more is one of the six fortresses located around the map. After clearing out the phantoms, or just avoiding them, take a storage crit around and loot the entire thing. As a general idea, this is what I got from looting one fortress with an empty storage crate. The Shadow Stormfish is the most expensive fish in the game and also one of the hardest to catch. A good tip for catching these far more easily is to fish for them at the arena. Located at K12, the arena is the only island in the game that is not within any specific region. This means that when fishing for stormfish, the only possible ones you can catch are the nighttime variant and the shadow stormfish. So if you are fishing for stormfish during the day at the arena, the only possible stormfish you can catch is the shadow. For certain ladders, such as this one here at Ancient Spire Outpost, it is actually faster to stand in front of it and jump up it than to climb it normally. You can tell how many emissaries of a specific trading company are on a server based on the number of ships on said emissaries table. For example, this server has one Athena, one Gold Hoarder, and no Order of Souls, Merchant Alliance, or Reapers ships on it. The top right section of the map, known as the Shores of Gold, can usually only be accessed during the Shores of Gold Tall Tale. However, there is a way to access it whenever you want. To do this, start up the Shores of Gold Tall Tale, head on over to the island, complete the first four vaults, and upon collecting the Gold Hoarders coin, you will receive a checkpoint. This is all you need. You can place down this checkpoint at any time, anywhere on the map, and it will attach the Shroud Breaker to your ship, giving you full access to that top right section of the map that would usually be inaccessible. Fishing for Devilfish in the Devil's Roar can be a pain due to all the exploding volcanoes. A safe spot away from these volcanoes is to the southeast of Cursewater Shores. In this location, no volcano can hit you and it has the added benefit of being one of the most secluded spots on the entire map. If you need to sell at Reaper's Hideout and do not have a Harpoon rowboat, the fastest possible location to sell from is not actually any of the docks, but something known as the Quick Sell Spot. This spot is located right here on the map and can be reached by maneuvering your ship through all the little reefs around Reaper's Hideout and aiming your ship through this little gap in the fence when parking. This spot is located much closer than any of the docks and is by far the most efficient spot when selling at Reaper's Hideout. If you do have a lot of fish or regular meat to cook for Hunter's Call Rep or just to get more health, it is far more efficient to do it at a fortress where there are four grills available for use than on your ship where there is only one. 
When driving through the pesky storm, you are far more likely to be hit by lightning if you have a sword equipped. When driving through a storm, make sure to switch that sword out for another weapon. One of the most annoying commendations and titles to get in the game is the Hunter of Treacherous Plunder. To make this commendation easier to get, head on over to the Shores of Gold and head up to this pond here, casting your rod roughly in the area where I do. The water in this pond is actually so shallow that any fish that spawns will almost immediately despawn. This makes the process for catching treacherous plunder much faster, as anything that is not treacherous plunder or an ashen key will immediately despawn. It is actually possible to hop in between servers while retaining your emissary flag and your ship's supplies. To do this, you will either need a checkpoint for the first or the third of the Pirate's Life Tall Tales, or you will need to go to the Castaways Camp on any outpost and start them there. After you have started or placed down a checkpoint for one of these two Tall Tales, head to the nearest portal, go through, wait for the long intro to the Tall Tale to finish, then you can cancel the Tall Tale, it will take you back through the portal, and spawn you into a brand new server with your ship supplies and your emissary flag retained. From a visibility point of view, the absolute best sails in Sea of Thieves are the Dark Adventurer sails. While most sails restrict the helm's view nearly entirely, especially on a galleon, the Dark Adventurer sails have handy cutouts that allow the helm to see pretty much entirely in front of the ship. However, you will need to pay quite a lot for these sales as they are priced at nearly 8.3 million gold. When passing by the Uncharted N13 island, do keep in mind that the reef underneath the water sticks really far out to the northwest side, so make sure to give yourselves plenty of room so you don't accidentally run aground. So here is some information on different ship speeds depending on the wind conditions. When sailing directly into the wind with sails squared, the sloop is the fastest, followed by the brigantine and the galleon is the slowest. When sailing directly with the wind with sails in full billow, the galleon is the fastest, followed by the brigantine and the sloop is the slowest. When sailing with a crosswind with sails in full billow, the brigantine is the fastest, followed by the galleon and then the sloop. And when sailing into a crosswind where your sails can't be in full billow, the galleon is the fastest, followed by the brigantine and the sloop. Do keep in mind in this final position to keep your sloop sails squared as it is faster than turning them into wind, unlike the galleon and brigantine. It is widely known that if you are in the storm in Sea of Thieves, your ship will take damage. However, what some people don't know is that if you park your ship within the proximity of an island while in the storm, it will not take damage. This allows you to complete quests on an island or forts or any events you want on an island without the worry of taking storm damage. Though do keep in mind, rain will continue to fill your ship so you will need to bucket every once in a while. If you are a server hopper or looking to get in and out of servers fast to check what's on it, it is much faster to use the A Pirate's Life portal in the main menu when loading into a ship than the normal Adventure 1. This way, you skip the opening cinematic. If you do get a quest, riddle, or treasure map that is directing you to Old Faithful Island, all you have to do to cancel the voyage is come on over to this little table here and hold the cancel button. Mermaids will only spawn in the direction that your character is facing. So if you do want to hide a mermaid or get a mermaid in a specific location, just make sure to look there once you have reached a decent distance from the previous mermaid or your ship. If you are a tuckbot and enjoy sneaking around, do keep in mind that boots make more noise when walking on the deck of a ship. Take those boots off and go barefoot if you want to be quieter. 
If you are swimming and a shark spawns on you, it is actually possible to dodge the attack. Wait until the shark charges at you, swim directly at it, and right before it bites, look straight down and swim straight down. The shark will bite over top of you and you will not take any damage. A lot of players have trouble identifying skeleton ships versus normal player ships. The big thing to look out for when deciphering the two is blue and green lights on the skeleton ship, torn sails on the skeleton ship, and most importantly, the absolutely fat ass of the skeleton ship.